want to draw inspiration from the prophet uh, message that he preached in 1964, and he titled that message, What Do You Say This Is? And uh, you can take for a little subtopic, Jesus pray, Father, forgive them. Do you forgive others? As God forgive you all your sin and your trespasses. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter number 23 and verse 34. And uh, we want to mark this scripture with uh, the book of First John, uh, chapter 1 and verse 9 of this same scripture. The book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 34. And then we'll mark this scripture with the book of 1 John, chapter 1 and verse 9. Jesus pray, Father, forgive them. Do you forgive other as he forgave you all your sins and your trespasses? Hallelujah. Let us uh, read this scripture. It's on the screen. One, two, go. I, I need to hear your voice. Read with me. One, two, go. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiment and cast lot. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Let's read the book of 1 John, chapter number 1 and verse 9. Book of 1 John, chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Beloved, as we are gradually getting to the remembrance of the uh, celebration of Easter all over the world, I want us in this holy assembly to put ourselves to remembrance why our Lord Jesus Christ has to come. Uh, because uh, today we have allowed the spirit of forgetfulness to take hold of us, to forget why he died for you and me. And uh, he has given us an example on how we need to conduct ourselves in this life. But there are many of us that are forgotten and we are acting in opposite to what is required of us. And the prophet of God has taught us that for every blessing of God, there is a requirement. And tonight, are we really meeting the requirement? That is the cross of the matter. So many of us, the reason why our situation is the way we, it is, is because we are unforgiving people. And if you have the spirit of unforgiveness in you, don't even bother to pray. Don't even give an offering because your offering is not going anywhere. Your prayer is not going anywhere. And if you are not careful, you will be sick in your body as a result of unforgiveness. And that, are, that is why many people are suffer affliction in the world today because they are harboring unforgiveness in their heart. And that can enter the church of a group of people, even a church. If you have an unforgiving folks in the congregation, they will hold the prayer of that congregation as a ransom that God will not come. That is why we need to revisit this as we are gradually getting Easter. If you, if you like, do your own thing. God will never compromise on his word. That is why we need to change our mentality. We need, if we want to be a child of God, we need to do what the word of God has required of us to say. And that is why tonight, I want us to be careful and I want us to carry a self and thorough examination in our life why we have to look inwardly in our life. Have you prayed one prayer over and over again? And God has not answered that prayer. And the question you need to ask you, have I met all the requirements? Hallelujah. 
have I, been, have I met all the requirements? What God say concerning prayer? Do I, uh, can I put a petition before the Lord and God will honor that prayer? Let us think about it. Let's go back to that scripture in the book of Luke, chapter 23. And let's uh, start from verse 23 to 34 this time around. We are going somewhere, so let's uh, go with me uh, as we go into this uh, thought. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And finally gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto him, them, him, that for the seditions and murder was cast into the prison, whom they had desire, for he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they lay hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid on the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Beloved, are you bearing with your brother? Are you bearing with your sister? Because uh, we sing this word, take your cross every day and follow Jesus. What does that mean? The cross of your brother, the cross of your brother, offense will come, wrath will come. Have you allowed that to be a stumbling block to you or to others? The Bible says there were many people that were gathered in that place, but it's only one person that stepped up to ready to carry that cross, to bear it. Because it's a heavy one. Nobody wants to do it. But the man stepped forward. The man was thinking of the weight of that cross on our Lord Jesus Christ. And the God gave him the revelation to bear it for you and me so that that can be accomplished. And that he might bear it after Jesus. Are you bearing it after your brother or your sister? Did the Lord not give you a commandment that you should bear and wait for one another and forgive one another? But why is it that you don't want to do it, but you want to pray? For God will never, the Bible says, a prayer of a sinner is an abomination before the Lord. That is why we need to do it. If you really want to celebrate uh, Easter, if you want to know the true meaning of Easter, let us start from here. The one of the reasons why he came to do the work of reconciliation, that is why he died. And he wants us to be reconciled with him. He wants us to be reconciled with one another. In our relationship, husband and wife, friends, brothers, church of the living God, God wants us to be reconciled. But why is it that you don't want to be reconciled? In your relationship, you always find fault with everybody, but you are a cleansed man. You are holy roller. Something is wrong with you. From your home, there is a problem. In your circles of relationship, there is a problem. With your children, there is a problem. Everything, you will always find fault or one excuses or the other. God said, he has not given you that uh, mission. It is the work of the devil. If you are on that kind of assignment, it is Satan that is trying to shift you like a wheat. Because God wants us to make sure that there is a priest, there is love among brothers. That is why he came to die so that he can redeem us and uh, 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 reconcile us back to himself. And as they led him away, they lay hold of one Simon, a Cyrenia, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read a little further. And there followed him a great company of people, and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourself and weep for your children. Hallelujah. But for behold, the day are coming in, in thee which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, 
and the womb that never bear, and the paths which never give suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do this thing in the green tree, what shall be drawn in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactor, one on the right hand and on the other left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Beloved, the problem today is that I may step on your toes and I may not even know it. That is why God said, Father, forgive them. They may not know. Even they may criticize you innocently for things that you don't know about. But God said, forgive them. Forgive means forgive them. And that is the problem today among relationships. That is why people do not want that one to happen again. If you have an attitude like that, you are not a Christian. Because God wants us to be like him. And we want to be Christ-like. How do I know? Because the word of God says so. Let us go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And let us read from verse 14 to 18. God has given us. From cradle to the grave, your life will be embedded in relationship. There is no way by which you can be here. You pass through a relationship between two people. They cannot be you without your father and your mother. And throughout in your journey through life, your shoulder, your life, your destiny is anchored in the shoulder of giant in form of relationship that will help you as you journey through your life. That is why as you go along, people will step on your toes. Have you ever seen a, 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 an individual that doesn't accept a Melchizedek? You have a father, you have a mother. Go and ask them. If, even as they love themselves, they have misunderstanding. But through their misunderstanding, there are many of them that stay just because of their children. Even though the condition is not pleasant. But they say, but for my children, I will not wait in this relationship. They have cause to look beyond the shortcoming. And they forgive and stay together for the sake of their children. Hallelujah. But uh, look at some women that are so careless, they walk away and their children suffer. And that is why many of all those children, they always put it on their mother. That if you are take care and bear it for me, my life will have been different. Why? Because many people, they have zero tolerance. They cannot endure. They want it rosy, rosy. Life is not rosy, rosy. We have to bear, we have to go through pain. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us an example. Let's read this scripture. Look at your relationship. Is it always smooth? That is the, the cross. But if you genuinely forgive other people, many people over time, they will come and make it right with you. And your life, your, your, your Christian life, your Christian virtue will change them. And they will want to serve the living God that you, because they know they did you evil. For he is our peace, who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even in the law of commandment contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twin in one new man, so making peace. Hallelujah. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain enmity thereby. But why is it that you don't want to slay enmity? Why? You just want to hold on there. And that is why things have not been easy with you. That's why you need to change. If you go in the job environment, there are folks that are there that are crazy like a fox. I'm telling you, God has used your finger as a modus operandi in measuring things. It can never be equal. You need to find, use wisdom to find common understanding and relate to people 
in the job environment, in the circles of friends, because you are not built in the same way. Your level of temperament are not the same. That is why you know that you, you don't need to hold anything against anybody. And that he may reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. It, enmity has to die. It has to go. That is the way it is. Or else the angel of your destiny, you have made him your enemy. There are many people that are suffering today that the, the man that God has sent into their life make mistakes. And they have all that against that person. And that same person is the angel of their destiny that will take them to their next level. And that is why their life is very hard. Verse 17. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Hallelujah. Forgiveness. Oh, give us the access way whereby we can look unto heaven and uh, we, can, uh, we can ask for forgiveness, we can ask for mercy. But today, you have locked some people in your heart and you have taken away the key. And until Jesus comes, you will hold them there, you will not let them go. And that is why you also are in one point. And things will never change until when you change your mentality. Because God did not give you that ministry to hold anybody uh, in ransom. Or, or, what is the definition of unforgiving? Mary Bam website dictionary said, unwilling or unable to forgive. Having or making no allowance for error or weakness. But you know what the word of God says? Let us look at it in Ephesians 4.32. So that that one will change your mentality. So that you will know that you are not permitted to be wicked or evil to your brother. You just have to forgive. You just have to read this scripture with me. If you are a Christian, this is the core cornerstone of our Christianity. Let's read one to, together. And be ye evil and wicked to one another. And be ye kind to one another. Stone hearted. But why is your heart like a stone? And you call yourself a Christian? If you are Christ like, God said, Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God. For Christ's sake, refuse to forgive you. This is the problem in the body of Christ. You will see some people that come to church. They are more than the man that is uh, in our court. They harbor bitterness against their fellow sister. And they even become an agent for the devil. They will begin to incite and put fire all around other people to incite it just because they are malicious and they are in that disagreement with another person. And they will begin to create chaos in the house of God. There are many people that will go to hell. You are not a Christian. You are not... You're, your conduct, your character is not Christ-like. You are satanic. Because that is what the prophet of God said. He said a man without the nature of Christ is satanic. I, I didn't say it. The prophet said it. And I believe him. Because that is true. He said a man without Christ is satanic. It's only Satan that always wants to kill. 
to steal and to destroy. He's always on rampage. That's Satan. That is his mission. When he go all about roaring, he's to destroy. But as the children of the Most High God, he made you and me an ambassador of peace. And that is what is required, ambassador of love. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you and me. That's why we must not allow wrath to come in our relationship. Offense will come. It is part of human nature. But we will look beyond the offense so that we can become the child of the Most High God. So that is why you need to change your mentality. Let's read the book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23 to 24. We must try. There are many people that are sick in their body today. They are being afflicted because of unforgiving spirit. The word of God is speaking to you and me this evening. If ye continue in faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What does that mean? It is easy for you to move away. That's what the scripture is saying. It is easy for you to move away from the truth. It is easy for you to move away from love. So that when you come, when you move away from the purchase redemption for you, the commandment of God, what is required, then you are out of faith. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, there is a move away, sir. There is move away, sister, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. We are wrong. I, Paul, I am made a minister. 24. Who now rejoice in my suffering for you, and feel up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Christ died for you and me. He paid the price. It is, not, it is not easy on him. He did it because he was thinking of the Lord. He was thinking of his relationship, our fellowship with him. That is why he came down to die, to become a man, so that he can reconcile us back to himself, so that we can continue in that mission to reconcile the world back unto him. That is why he behoves us as we go in our journey every day that we need to add that. So it is critically important for us to know that. And that is why we must be careful if we are truly Christian. Let us look at some scripture to encourage ourselves. Let us go to the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. What does it say? For bearing one another, for bearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, refuse to do it. Hello? For bearing one, and forgiving one another. If any, any man, any is any, any man, have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye angry. Be you mad. Hello? But why is it that you are always mad? Why are you always angry? Why are you allowed Satan to cheat you? Why are you allowed Satan to defraud you? 
of your fellowship with the Most High God, and we want another because we are not going to be here forever. Our days are numbered. And that is why the psalmist said, teach us to number our days so that we may apply our heart unto foolishness. But why are you acting foolishly? Why are you acting ignorantly? If Christ should come today, he should call it a day. Do you know that unforgiving spirit can take you to hellfire? Because the, the word of God says, we are a tree fallen, so you remain it. If you have that unforgiveness, when the, 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 it is time for you to go, you will die as a sinner and you go to air fire. That is why God always wants us not to allow the sun to go down on our annoyance because we don't know the time. You might think that you and me will be here for another 50 years, but who knows the time? Who know the hour? Who know the day? That is why you need to clean the pipe. You need to make sure that your heart is clean and you don't hold anything against anybody so that you can have a clean access and a pathway so that the angel will come to carry you home. Let us look at the book of uh, Mark 11, chapter 23 and back to 26. What does he say? The book of Mark 11, verse 23 to 26, very popular scripture. We just read it, but we don't look in between the lines. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but also believe those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said, on one condition. Next slide. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Uh, on one condition. And when ye stand praying, have hatred, have unforgiving spirit. That is the stumbling block. Why many people have to pray and pray? Because you know, when you are praying, you have locked up somebody in your heart and you will not let that person go anyway. But you still want to pray. You are wasting your time. The prophet of God said, for every blessing of God, there is a requirement. But the question is, are you meeting the requirement? Am I meeting the requirement? When you start praying, forgive. Forgive means forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Hello? But if you do not forgive, can you read the next one for me? But if you do not forgive, can we read? I, I need to hear everybody's voice. But if you do not forgive, your father will, will begin to praise you and bless you. Hello? Neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. That is the cross of the matter. We need to change our mentality. There are many people that have been lost in the church. That they are not taking the word of God to heart. You are just coming to church and you are still behaving as if you know the word of God. If you know the word of God, you will change and do as uh, 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 according to the word of God. Because the word of God says in uh, the book of uh, Matthew chapter 12 verse 30.
Read this scripture with me. He that is not with me is for me. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. You have been leading so to hell. God gave you a, a, a commandment to you and me. Wait for one another. Love one another. Pray for one another. That brother that hurt you, you go on your knee and pray so that God can transform. God can touch them. God, you can continue to show them love. But that one you don't want to do. Maybe because you lack revelation. God gave you a commandment to them. And I will show you tonight, it will shock you. That is why you must change your mentality. Because you are breaking the word of God. You are not permitted to break the word. You need to do according to the word of God. So that is why we need to change our mentality. Let's look at the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 27 to 28. God gave you a commandment. And are you walking in obedience to that commandment? That is the cross of the matter. Read this scripture with me. For I say unto you, which year? That means some people are deaf and dumb. They don't hear. But I say unto you, which year? Love your friend. Hello? Love your enemies. Do to them which hate you. God said, love your enemy. Once upon a time, I'm an enemy of God. You are an enemy of God. But he showed you mercy. He showed me mercy. But why is it that you are stone-hearted? Why is it that you don't want to open your heart to the word of God and forgive? God even gave you a commandment. I didn't put it in the Bible. I'm not, I'm not privileged to be one of the apostles that, that wrote the Bible. But he said, but I say unto you, which ear? That means some people that they may put some quoting swab and block their hair so that they will not hear. He said, but I say unto you, which ear? Because there are some people that we, they are with a dumb and deaf spirit. That is why they don't want to hear the truth of the word of God. But I say unto you, which ear love your enemy? Love your love able. That's the meaning. Do evil to them which hate you. You are your own. If you are doing good to those people that will do you good, you are just making a show. But if you show kindness to somebody that is helpless, that he have no way of paying you back, then you are fulfilling the cause of the gospel. That is the reason why God put you and me here and give us that ministry. But I say unto you, which ear love your enemy? Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. Hello? You don't want to hear this. He said, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. This is hard, eh? But it is the gospel according to our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the core out of God. That is why he told you those who are well have no need of a physician. But those that are sick, God care about those important folks. God care about those sick folks. That is why you are in ministry. If you are not meeting of all those people that are enemy of God, you are not in, 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 you are not a child of God. That is why there are some crazy folks that come to this sanctuary. They are crazy like a fox. That many of us cannot do half of what our pastor go through. Many of us will flare out and blow the fire. But that is what ministry is all about. 
And finally, let's read it one more time from verse 27. Because it's a prayer meeting. Let's read it together, church. I need to hear your voice. But I say unto you, which hear. Are you hearing God tonight? Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despisefully use you. There are some people that they think they are using you. There are many of them that has come through this sanctuary. They will pretend and the, the man of, servant of God will receive them, show them kindness. Until when they leave from here, they will see it the other way that they have missed their angel of blessing. Because when they go there, when they see the other side of people that doesn't have love in their heart, then they will know the difference. That there are few people that are called and given that assignment. And they do know their mission. But do you know your mission? You don't want to deal with the, those people. You are the one that is clean. So that is why the situation in your life has remained the way it is. That is why you need to change your mentality. Finally, this evening, let's look at the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 23 to 35. If you have unforgiving spirit, let us look at another example in the Bible and let us see the situation like this so that you will repent and make a U-turn from that route, because God did not want you and me to go that route. The book of Matthew 18 from verse 23, 23 to 35, 23 to 35. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven lacking unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his law commanded them to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down, and worship him. Say, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Hallelujah. For the same servant went out, and find one of his fellow servants, which owe him an hundred pence. And he lay hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into the prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou kind servant, O thou good servant, O thou worthy servant, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on their fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wrought, and delivered him to the tormentor, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, 
if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother a trespass. As we are gradually getting ready for Easter, I want you to carry self-examination. What, who is that individual that has offended you? There are some people that have offended you, maybe 20, 30, 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, 2 years. God said, if you are still harboring bitterness against them, if you have locked them up in your heart, God said, he will heap a coal of fire and judgment against you. That is why you don't need even bother to celebrate Easter because it is not meant for you. But if you are truly has been forgiven by the Lord, you need to change your mentality and change your way totally tonight because our God wants us to be like him. That is why he behoves us as a believer. If we want to serve the Lord, let us serve God genuinely with all our heart. God hates wishy-washy Christian. God hates a uh, uh, pretender in the house of God. God wants a genuine, true believer. That's why the prophet of God has taught us very well three categories of believer. Which one are you? Are you just coming into the house of the Lord and you are just passing time and wait until you go to have fire? Or you are just a choose and select. You want to choose what you believe. You have developed so much itchy ear that you block your one of your ear to what you don't want to hear and you open your other ear to what you want to hear. Shame on you. You are not a child of God. You belong to the devil. That is why you need to repent. Uh, because God is looking for true believer. If he show you mercy, he said, God say, go and do it likewise to other people. That is why we must be very careful in our Christian journey. As we walk, we sing this song, we hold a debt that we could not pay. When we needed someone, he step it up. He pay and forgive you all. And in the same vein, he wants you to do likewise. That is what he said. So likewise. But when you refuse to do it, he said he's mad against you. He's unhappy against you. That is why you are going through that affliction. The only way by which deliverance shall come to you, the book of Nahum chapter 1 verse 9 says, affliction shall not arise the second time. The reason why you are writing letter to affliction and you see pattern of affliction in your life is just because you are harboring evil in your heart. You are unforgiving in nature. That is why you are sickly in your body. That is why you pray a prayer and your prayer is not being answered because God did not want you. Even if you offer an offering, God rejected it. So that is why don't even bother to put an offering in the basket because God will not take it. How do I know? Let me show you so that you will not just say he's making it up. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. What does he say? So you need to really know whether you are in faith or you are out of faith. It's a very, very serious matter. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you. Do to them that hate you and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you. That is the scripture. And uh, uh, let me look for that scripture so that he will encourage you. So that uh, you will know how to act right. Let's read the book of um, two more scripture and we'll leave it there as we pray. Let's read the book of Luke chapter 17 and verse 3 and 4. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, 
and seven times in a day turn again to thee, say, I repent, thou shalt refuse to forgive him. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day he turn to you again, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. That is the Bible standard. That is our Heavenly Father standard. That is what you need to do. That is what I'm required to do. That is what makes me to be like him. Every day we sin against him. And any day that we go to him, he forgives us all. Hallelujah. He forgives us all every day. Matthew chapter 6, 13 to 15. As we leave it there and read the quote uh, for the sake of time. We have opportunity, we can look up at you. I have not even uh, go beyond certain point, but uh, God will help us. And uh, read the scripture with me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. For if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. May God help us. The prophet of God in the message, the perfect date, 1963, paragraph 19, he have this to say. He said, now, Faith is based on forgiveness. Then, and then, as we said this evening, trying to get to church into the place to where we could really see apostolic times moving among us, that is what we all hunger. And it is just laying right at the door. We see it. But we want to see more of it. We want to search a flow that it will be a help to us. Us flow out to others. Hallelujah. The prophet of God in the message, what who do you say this is? 1964, we can forgive one another. We can't, we can't forget about it because we are, we are made different. But God can forgive it and forget it. He can just wipe it out as though it never was. See, because he has access to that sea of forgetfulness. But we don't. Just think of it. That God cannot even remember that we ever sing. Think of that. Choir, you young folks, what if, what about that? God don't even remember that we ever sinned. See, he can forget the old thing and never will be brought into memory anymore. Wouldn't that be something that you would think or, or <laughs> meditate about? And uh, the prophet of God in another message, the principle of the fine healing, 1951. He said, now, to you people out in this a way that is sick, bound and afflicted, without your prayer card or so forth, now you look here and you look di this way. And believe with all your heart and accept the story I told you. I pray to the Father like this Lord Jesus, I know that you promised this thing in the last day. Here is our brother. We've been raised with him, and we know he's just a man, just a poor, illiterate boy. But we believe that. You are dealing with him, and I believe he told the truth. 
Now, if he has told you the truth, you speak to him. And have him to call me and tell me what is wrong with me. And what, so forth, anything that might hinder. And I ask that, and I watch the Holy Spirit move out over the audience there. Everywhere there is in the building. He will do it. And then if you are a doubter, a non-believer, watch it do you the same way. Hallelujah. And the prophet of God in the message Laodicea age, he have this thing to say, chapter 9. The God of God is a Christ-like character produced in a fairy furnace of affliction. That is the right kind of God. Finally tonight, <coughs> the prophet of God in another message, the restoration of the bright tree, 1962, paragraph 98, and I read, if Satan has robbed you of the privilege of being a son or a daughter of God, we have a right this evening by the Holy Ghost to enforce the claim of God. Bring them back. If he's afflicted you and made you sick, we have a right before God to enforce the law of God by his right. We are healed. Amen. Bring him back. Turn him loose. You are taking him out yonder of death. And we claim him. Bring him back now. Let's go. That is the enforcement. Restore it back to its natural condition again. A man is sick. Baby is sick. Woman is sick. See? They are out of their natural condition. Then we have a right to enforce our claim. Not our claim. It is our claim because God gave it to us. By his right, we were here. He was wounded for our transgression. With his stripe, we were healed. Now we have a right to enforce that law. And the lawgiver, the Holy Spirit himself is here the agent of God, to see it that it is done that way. Amen. Hallelujah. And in closing, as a musician begin to take their place, finally tonight, uh, the prophet of God in the message, the testimony of a true witness, 1961. Paragraph 278. The testimony of a true witness, 1961. Paragraph 278. The prophet said, and I quote, I pray that you have no rest, no rest at all, until you have received the Holy Ghost. And I pray for myself for these who raise their hand that has the Holy Ghost. I profess it. You profess it. You Christian friends, we are letting that Holy Spirit lay dormant. We are catered too much to the pleasure of life. We are afraid of a little affliction. We are afraid of these things. Let's lay this word aside. Confess not this word fail riches that is so rapidly decay. Build your hope on nothing, on things eternal. They will never pass away. Oh, to God, unchanging hand. Oh, to God, unchanging hand. When the earthly friend forsaken, just still more closer to him claim. Hold on to him. May we as Christians who claim the Holy Spirit, may we be so ashamed of ourselves May we be so versed in our spirit that we will never cease until we are living, burning life, filled with the spirit, and letting him operate through us. I don't meet in a bunch of fanatism. You know better than that. I mean in a true, reverent way, 
of God, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, through the power and the manifestation to walk in this last day when we know that the end is near. May the Lord uh, help us.